In this video, we'll discuss about Paget's disease. So, coming on to the definition of Paget's disease, it is basically the uh, relatively uncommon bony disorder characterized by repeated phases of bone resorption followed by reactive bone formation excessive in excessive and uncoordinated manner in the same area Another name is ostitis deformans. So it was basically first talked about by Paget, Sir Paget, J Sir James Paget. So that's why we call it as Paget's disease. Uh, now what you will see is basically there will be severe distortion and weakening of bone. All right. Now, uh, coming on to the etiology, right? So, uh, first of all, we will discuss about the various etiologies. Then we'll discuss about the pathophysiology. So, either it can occur due to a circulatory disturbance, or it can occur due to an inflammatory reaction to bone, or it can occur due to a glandular or a genetic abnormality. Then it can occur due to the slow viral infection. Then it can occur due to the decrease or the defective connective tissue metabolism. Or it can occur due to an autoimmune disease or an endocrinal abnormality. Now let's discuss the pathophysiology. Now what actually happens is, this is basically a disease of osteoclast. This is a disease of osteoclast. Now uh, these osteoclast and the bone marrow and the precursor, uh, basically the circulating osteoclast precursor cells. Now all of them what happens is, they, are in, they have an increased sensitivity. They have increased sensitivity two factors like 125 dihydrocol calciferol and vitamin D also rankle IL6 now due to this what happens is there is an increase in the bone resorption okay now after this there is a reactive response by the osteoblast due to which there is an increase now due to this there is an increase in the uh, osteoblast action then there is active bone formation, bone is being laid down and then there is repetitive phases of remodeling resorption again leading to a distortion and weakened bone. Okay, so this is basically uh, the whole thing that happens behind the occurrence of Paget's disease. Now coming on to the epidemiology, it usually occurs in uh, people who are more than 50 years of age. Uh, also it shows uh, more predilection to males and in sight uh, you must remember that it occurs in skull pelvic, sacrum, tibia, femur, also less common in clavicle, upper extremities, it is very common in sacrum, also uh, it is it has a preference for axial skeleton, okay. Now let's talk about the uh, clinical features, now in clinical features, first of all what occurs is that they bone, uh, there is a bone pain, bone pain which may worsen at night then there is frontal bossing enlargement of skull then uh, bowing deformity uh, now what happens is the legs are basically bowed so this gives a, a chalk stick like appearance chalk stick like appearance also uh, 
the person actually moves with a waddling gait. Now this is the keyword, waddling gait. Now due to this, uh, what happens is uh, the person has a monkey-like stance. Monkey-like stance. Now one more keyword is platabasia. Now what is platabasia? It is basically the skull becoming more softened. Okay, so base of the skull is softened. Now a very important thing which is usually a diagnostic criteria uh, what happens is uh, the skin which is uh, present skin which is present over the affected bone it appears to be warm uh, why is it so because of the increase in the vascularity okay uh, also uh, then uh, we will also uh, we have mentioned about platabasia then monkey stance bone deformity uh, yeah one more important keyword leon Tetiaceous ossia. Now, this was also present in fibrous dysplasia, the monostotic type. Okay, this is basically a line, line like face. Uh, then, uh, yes, very important. In Paget's disease, you will have CVS abnormalities. CVS abnormalities such as aortic stenosis or calcification of cardiac walls. Now, very important to remember. Uh, what happens is in this you can also have an optic and uh, optic as well as the cochlear nerve compression. Now due to this the person can turn blind or he can be deaf. Then there is headache because facial bones are being affected. The skull bones are also being affected. So paresthesia, cranial nerve deficits. These are basically the second uh, secondary complications. Okay. Now, after this, uh, we'll uh, discuss some of the oral manifestations. Now, in oral manifestations, what we see is there is widening of the alveolar ridge. Now, due to this widening of the alveolar ridge, uh, the person who is a denture-bearing uh, person, uh, the person who wears dentures, uh, usually complains of uh, tightening of dentures. Okay, so tightening. Then, uh, there is flat palate. Then, jaws both will be affected uh, also there is enlargement of jaws then migration of teeth now some very characteristic things that you must remember uh, first of all remember that there is going to be diastema then uh, then remember malocclusion then remember palatoversion of teeth then hypercementosis. Now this is a very important uh, keyword, hypercementosis, and it is usually asked in uh, vivas and MCQs. Hypercementosis of teeth. Now uh, they usually ask for which uh, bone uh, bone bony disorder causes hypercementosis of teeth, and you must mention Paget's disease. Uh, after hypercementosis, uh, we have uh, retroclination of incisors. Okay. Now let's talk about the radiographic features. Now in radiographic features, uh, first of all, uh, we will see we will see three stages. Okay, the early stage, the intermediate, and the later last stage. In early stage, what you will see is you will see radio density. In this, you will see radio density plus radio density. In this, you will basically see radio density, but lesser in comparison to the normal bone. Now, over here, you must mention one more keyword, which is the circumscripta. Basically, osteoporosis circumscripta, the individual lesion. Now, in this, you must mention one more cotton wool-like appearance. Okay, this is the keyword to be used for the Paget's disease. Um, then, uh, basically, what is happening is. Oh, just give me a second yeah you must mention this now basically what is happening uh, in early what we see is uh, I told you before this is a disease of osteoclast so what happens is osteoclast basically resorbs the bone due to which there is radio lucency then what happens is reactive reaction of osteoblast to the osteoblast both are performing due to which somewhere there will be radio lucency and somewhere there will be radio density due to which it is a cotton wool like appearance in last stage what you will see is there is 
no action of osteoclast and after some time you will see that osteoblast also stops acting now when osteoblast stops acting there comes a stage which is called as osteosclerosis stage now over here what you will see is that the bone it will be compact the bony trabeculae will be compact and there will be not much activity all right so uh, this is basically all this uh, also you can mention about the bone enlargement cortical thickening increased trabeculae loss of lamina dura sometimes in viva questions it is also asked which all lesions are associated with loss of lamina dura so you must remember some conditions which do have this uh, for example uh, if you talk about radicular cysts there is also loss of lamina dura okay and in this also also, uh, I think there is loss of lamina dura in the odontomes. I don't remember specifically, but you can check up, check it out. So yeah, so uh, in lab findings, uh, what you will see is uh, this is very important. Uh, you must always remember what you're talking about. So total and bone specific alkaline phosphatase. Never mention acid phosphatase. Both are different. So alkaline phosphatase. Now this is increased. Now to what levels it is increased? It is 250. Burdensky units. Um, you might be asked the question in what units is it mentioned? You must tell Burdensky units. Then in se uh, severe cases, what you will see is the urinary hydroxyproline. It will also be increased hydroxyproline. The serum, calcium, and phosphate levels they will be normal. Uh, also, let's uh, talk about uh, the abnormal ratio of alpha. CTX and uh, beta CTX. This will be basically increased. Okay. Uh, also, in radiographic features, one more thing I forgot to mention is the Abraham sign or the basically the black beard sign. Uh, this is very important. Now, what happens is when we do the bone scintigraphy. Now, in bone scintigraphy, what happens is uh, there is a, a total uptake of the uptake throughout the mandible, condyle to other condyle. So this is basically a very characteristic feature of the Paget's disease. Okay, uh, now let's talk about the histopathology, which is very important. Um, first of all, just remember this diagram. So we will use some purple and all right then you can i can't find my histo pencil right now so i just draw with this if you don't mind just remember like this this is instead of the pink color pencil of histo all right so what you will see is basically this is a mosaic like pattern or a mosaic like pattern or a jigsaw puzzle pattern okay these are the keywords you must mention them jigsaw puzzle pattern also, what are the these lines? These are basically deeply hematoxophilic reversal lines. Now, coming back to the first year, what are reversal lines? These are because bone is uh, again undergoing repeated phases of resorption and remodeling and then again like being laid down. So, due to this reason, reversal lines are being formed, distinguishing the area. Uh, now, you just can't just mention this much in it so you have to elaborate so we will go back to this thing now uh, remember one thing in early stage there is osteoclast so mention about osteoclast now these osteoclasts are not normal osteoclasts these are abnormally large they have around 100 nuclei then mention about the mixed in mixed you will mention about osteoclast and the osteoblast then you will mention about the mosaic pat like pattern of the woven bone then there is also this mention, uh, you have to do this, uh, you have to write that there is deeply hematosoxyphilic uh, reversal lines. Then in the later stage, you just mentioned that it is an osteosclerotic stage. Basically, osteoblastic activity has diminished and now burnout phase is predominating in which bony islands are very compact and there is a marrow space, it is highly vascularized. Now, after the lab findings, we have written about the lab findings. Um, now, we will discuss about the treatment. Uh, in treatment, uh, basically, it is nothing uh, very specific. Uh, you give aspirin, acetaminophen, nasates, vitamin D, bisphosphonates. Also, mention this to get extra marks. 
which is the mithramycin and lycomycin. Now these have the osteoclast cytotoxic effect. All right. Now, uh, differential diagnosis, you can mention about acromegaly, you can mention about fibrous dysplasia, then you can mention about florid cementosseous dysplasia. Also, secondary, oh, sorry, secularizing osteomyelitis, osteosarcoma, osteopetrosis. You can also mention about some potential complications which can be secondary uh, fractures or, or secondary sarcoma, sorry, and bony fractures. So this completes the phases to series. I hope you understood. I tried to make it as simple as possible. Thanks for watching.